Norman Creek has been a section of my life, I suppose, since uh, early childhood. By the time I was about eight or nine, my parents were quite happy to allow me to wander around the creek, just enjoying all those things that the creek offered, particularly a young boy. We did have some games in common and up to a certain age I think that the boys would play tunnel type games and uh, cubbies and that sort of thing but they tended to go further afield to the creek proper to where there was water. They'd fish. Uh, as a schoolboy, one of the areas that we used to visit was a place called the Floodgates. I've seen uh, men perched up on the gates with long poles uh, with hoops. They would net the prawns and fill up their buckets. And uh, you'd get a feed of prawns to take home. So we'd, you'd boil them up at home and uh, and uh, eat them as a sort of an entree to the main course. I seen Norman Creek when I was a lad. The first time that I had a good look at it, I was amazed because it was in flood. And the thing that struck me was the height of the tide. Another thing that struck me about it was that the water was clear and it was really a sight that you won't see again. As children, it was an open area full of weedy grass and um, our main activity was tunnelling through it and building cubby houses. And in the wet season, my favourite hobby was to collect the baby toad poles. And uh, mum wouldn't let me keep them in the house, so I had glass jars in, in the laundry. And they inevitably died. And so I was doing my bit for the environment without even knowing it. You know, there's a lot of mystique about the creek back in those days. There was a bloke there who lived in the tree, because there were a lot of poor people around in those days. He had a, a rope ladder or something which he used to pull up at night. It was a big tree that he lived in, and there was a lot of mangrove trees around there. There was an elderly, swarthy man who summer and winter wore an overcoat and we used to see him on the creek occasionally. He kept his distance from us and, and we kept our distance from him and we used to call him Pray for Rain. In Stanley Street, where it meets Cavendish Road, there was a Chinaman's garden there. And they were growing lettuces and salad sort of stuff, you know. We had baskets, there was only two of us, and different types of bread, and we'd go into the houses with the baskets of bread. And I had to walk up to this, to where they were, and they're sitting outside, and I had the wind up. And they were all out, and uh, they were smoking something or something. And I, I thought, um, uh, they, they just pointed to where, um, where to put the bread and I, and I couldn't get out the place quick enough. 
Yeah, we used to swim in uh, the creek at a place called Shallow Rocks. We used to get across the floodgates, us kids, and across the concrete apron and walk uh, around further down the creek and there was a, it used to fall away in a bit of sand and, uh, and that's where all us kids used to swim. Because those days too, we didn't have any togs, so we used to take off all our clothes and swim in the nutty. <laughs> This is where our boat shed was. Uh, we had our swimming test here. We were allowed to swim in it at high tide. And uh, all the effluent had been um, pushed back up into the suburbs. Um, but apart from that, we thought that the creek was uh, absolutely first class. My brother went over to um, Churchy, through the mangroves, through wasps' nests in the trees and everything, and they threw, I think it was a bit of mud from the creek, because the class was in, the teacher was instructing some of the lads on the blackboard, the next thing, this, this raid's on. So there was pandemonium. They heard a call yell out, get the seniors. So these, um, my brother and his mates took off, back through all the mangroves and stuff and we swam across the creek to the other side to safety and the seniors all come belting out of the, church, out of the school after them. I don't, I'm pretty sure they never caught them though. The pocket swim is this large pocket of water here. Most of the people just dog paddled and were carried round by the tide. And they could furniture walk round the pocket by going from mangrove tree to mangrove tree. I had my first pocket swim in 1960. I've got a feeling it might have been the last year they had it. The old hands had given us their advice, sagely, keep your head above the water. <laughs> Don't swallow <clears throat> and ignore anything strange objects floating past. These days, people don't stay put very much. I think that people may miss out on getting to know an area generationally. We need to have a feel for where we live because unless we value it, we won't look after it. I think if everybody looked after their own backyard, we'd all be better off.